Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's use a little bit of game theory to see how the United States debt crisis is most likely to end. If you've been following the news lately, then you would know that the United States will very soon be unable to pay back its debts, which causes quite a problem for the country. And currently, Republicans in the House of Representatives and President Obama are trying to reach a compromise which would avoid such an outcome. To analyze this game theoretically, we need to figure out the order of moves and the moves that each player has and figure out the preferences that each player has over the outcomes associated with those moves. So start with the order of moves. First, the Republicans propose legislation. Essentially, they pass a bill through Congress that then Obama chooses whether to sign. So first, the Republicans propose legislation, and then Obama chooses whether to sign it. And if Obama vetoes the bill, then Obama chooses whether to exercise the 14th Amendment. 14th Amendment's been discussed recently, probably within the last week, what is the deal with this? Well, Section 4 of the 14th Amendment says that the validity of the public debt of the United States shall not be questioned. I've highlighted the important part there. Essentially, legal scholars are interpreting this to mean that the United States, if the United States would be unable to pay back its debts, well, it can't not pay back its debts, according to the Constitution, so the president would have the authority in absence of a law to make sure that those debts can be paid back. As a reminder, the Constitution supersedes any law that is written in the United States, so this 14th Amendment, Section 4 specifically, would theoretically give the president the ability to pay back debts even if the United States otherwise could not. Now, given those moves, let's talk about preferences over outcomes, starting with the Republicans. Republicans ideally want to cut spending. That would be their number one goal is to cut spending. If they can cut spending, then they can use that spending cut to pay back the debt. And if they can't get that number one outcome, their next best choice would be to pass the Gang of Six Compromise. So this involves some spending cuts and some increases in taxes. Basically, a group of senators, six senators, six senators specifically, some Republicans and some Democrats, have come up with this compromise and this would allow the United States to still pay back its deficits or its debts. And if the Republicans were to pass this Gang of Six compromise, well, they'd at least look like compromisers and that's a good thing if you want to get reelected theoretically. So given that they can't get those two choices, their next best option would be to force Obama to invoke the 14th Amendment. At least this way, they make the president look like he's a mean, evil person and unable to reach a compromise. But on the bright side, it does make sure the United States can't go bankrupt, which is, again, a very bad thing for the country. Um, the next best outcome would be to just pass legislation, which would increase taxes. They don't really want to do that. And the worst outcome is for the United States to go bankrupt. No one wants to see that, Republicans or Democrats. Now to go to Obama. Obama's number one goal would be to increase taxes. That would be his best outcome. His next best outcome would be to pass the Gang of Six Compromise. Again, this makes sure the United States doesn't go bankrupt. It doesn't make him look like a hard ass because he's been able to reach a compromise. So that gives him some electoral benefits. Um, and yeah, it's a generally good thing even though he can't get his best outcome and it involves some spending cuts. Next best option would be to invoke the 14th Amendment. Next best option would be to cut spending, and the worst option for him would be to watch the United States go bankrupt. Now, given those preferences and those moves, we can create a game tree that will represent those moves and those preferences. And I've done that here. Basically, the Republicans choose whether to cut spending, to go with the Gang of Six bill, or to increase taxes. Obama gets those bills, decides whether to veto or sign them, and if he chooses to veto them, then he chooses whether to go with the 14th Amendment option or pass on that option and watch the United States go bankrupt. This is a game of complete information, and so we can use backward induction to solve it. We start with what happens if Obama vetoes a bill. So what would happen if Obama would veto a bill? Well, we see here that the 14th Amendment gets a three outcome, the pass, uh, pass and watch the, United States go, get, watch the United States go bankrupt. I'll be able to speak English eventually. That has the worst outcome, that's a one, so these threes are greater than these ones, which means Obama would choose to go with the 14th Amendment option rather than watch the United States go bankrupt. That means we can erase the pass option and simply reduce the game to this. This will make it a little bit easier to go through the rest. Now we need to go through what happens when each of the when the Republicans pass each of these bills. So let's start with cutting spending. If the Republicans chose to cut spending, Obama could veto it and exercise the 14th Amendment, which will get him a three, or he could sign that bill. That will get him a two. This three is better than this two, so he won't sign it. He would veto it. We erase sign, and there we go. 
Moving on, we go to the next option, the Gang of Six Compromise. If Republicans pass the Gang of Six Compromise, Obama could veto and get a three or sign and get a four. He would prefer to sign and get a four, so we erase this veto. And again, we have simplified the game. Finally, we choose whether uh, we see what would happen if Obama would get a bill that would increase taxes. We see that he could sign in and get his most preferred outcome, get a five here, or veto and get a three. This five is greater than this three, so he would sign it. And now we know what would happen if the Republicans would pass any bill. So the Republicans, Republicans simply pass the bill that increases or maximizes their payoff. And we see that they have a three here, a four here, and a two here. This four is the best outcome. So it looks like that the Republicans optimal choice here is to pass the gang of six legislation. And so we see that the outcome of this game is for the Republicans to pass the gang of six legislation and for Obama to sign the bill to law. Now, what does this mean? Well, my prediction is the following. The Gang of Six legislation will become law, and if Republican lawmakers continue to stall, Obama will be more vocal about exercising this 14th Amendment option, essentially forcing the Republicans' hand and forcing them to go through this road of compromise because they don't want to see the United States go bankrupt. Now, the other thing that's worth noting here is that because this outcome is sort of inevitable anyway, stalling is only going to hurt the economy. It's going to increase uncertainty. So all of this posturing that's taking place on Capitol Hill really benefits no one. They should just go through this compromise already and get it over with. And basically the country will be better off. So that's my prediction. I think it's sensible. I think it's the good bipartisan thing to do. It's probably the best outcome possible for the country as a whole. So, you know, we'll see if that actually happens. That's my prediction. Who knows whether I'll be right. I think I'll be right. We'll see.